Hello and welcome to Port Centre, a show on the internet all about video games. How novel. Video games! We all love them, don't we? No? Well, we should. They're brilliant. In fact, the video game industry made more money last year than films, so if you're not playing games in 2011, you're a bit of a weirdo. Some games are so successful that even if they only come out on one system at first, they eventually get ported to another platform, with varying degrees of success. It might have been an arcade game or a Super Nintendo exclusive at first, but now it's on every system ever, ever, ever. Thanks, publishers. Occasionally, these new versions will feature brand new changes or platform-specific content. Sometimes this makes them better than the source material, and sometimes it makes them so bowel-meltingly awful it's a wonder the development team didn't shit out their own lungs during the making of the thing. And it's these versions that Port Centre aims to focus on. How? A little something like this. Doom! This is what people remember. Large maps, tons of baddies, a killer rock soundtrack and a fistful of boomstick. The game was originally released as a shareware title for the PC back in 1993 and was so popular that it got mentioned on proper TV shows like ER and Friends and that one other show from the 90s you really, really liked. It was the kind of thing you could just throw on and play mindlessly, perhaps after a long day at work where the boss had been breathing down your neck all day, finding fault with everything you're doing, so that by the time you got home and booted up the game you started to imagine all the soldiers had his gormless face. Yeah, take that you dick! Turn me down for promotion, will you? Yeah, fuck you! Fuck you! In 95, Doom was ported to the Super Nintendo, where it came in a spiffy looking red cartridge to distract you from the fact that it was balls on a stick, and the game even found its way onto the Game Boy Advance back in 2001, albeit with some tweaks to make it a little more family friendly. Apparently, it's okay for kids to see someone oozing precious life force out of a gaping chest wound as long as it's green. Also in 95, Ultimate Doom and Doom 2 got combined into one title and released on the newly launched PlayStation. Rather than simply copy and paste the game onto Sony's grey brick and call it a day, the developers took the time to make some significant changes. For a start, the audio has been completely overhauled. Almost every single sound in the game has been replaced with something a little more ominous, from switches and doors to the noises that the monsters make. That iconic rock soundtrack has gone too, replaced instead with incredibly well-produced and sometimes pant-wettingly scary ambient audio. The lighting has been given a significant overhaul as well, with areas and often entire maps lit in a completely different way from the PC original. Changing the sound and lighting may not seem like particularly big changes, but they completely alter the mood and tone of the game. The PC version, for all its pseudo-satanic themes, wasn't particularly spooky, it was you know, largely just a run and gun affair. The PS1 version is very scary by comparison. You can still do that mad dash to the exit, but with everything going on around you, you may not want to. In many ways, it's exactly the survival horror game that people keep saying doesn't exist. It's a genuinely tense and at times scary experience, there's a decent selection of weapons, there's the occasional puzzle, albeit in the form of find the right key for the door, and it even has some decent controls. The game predates the DualShock controller, so there's none of this twin-stick analogue witchcraft. Instead, the D-pad handles all your movement. You've got left and right to turn you left and right and up and down to move forward and backwards and then the L1 and R1 buttons allow you to sidestep, or strafe if you're a twat. It may seem clunky compared to modern control techniques, but it actually works surprisingly well. The game also supports a PlayStation mouse, if you've got one, which I don't, and I don't know anyone who ever did have one, ever. Did you have one? No, of course you didn't. Liar. The game supports multiplayer too, but not split screen. No, that'd be too easy. No, instead you need two PlayStations, and two TVs, and two copies of Doom and Sony's proprietary system link cable. Not an easy thing to get hold of these days. Do you know who I had to blow to get this cable? You can only link up two PlayStations, of course, so that rather limits the number of people you can play with. To two. Hey, you guys! The co-op mode is great fun, especially on higher difficulty levels when the players have to work together to avoid experiencing agonising death at the hands of... Oh, that thing hasn't got hands. <laughs> you telefragged me. Oh shit! <laughs> shoot Son me. of a... Did you shoot me? No, it wasn't me. Where'd that come from? Somebody hit me. I thought it was up here, oh, but... Oh, here. There's an imp down there. Oh shit. Shit, 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 sh
shit, little help. Where were you? I was over here. That's no thing. good. That doesn't help me. Unfortunately, deathmatch doesn't hold up quite so well. FPS deathmatches are best played with a group of friends, but you can only link up two PlayStation consoles. So Doom on the PS1 basically becomes an extended game of hide and seek that ends with the two of you standing facing each other and firing your weapons in each other's faces until one of you has the decency to fall down and die. I'm totally not behind you at all. Ah, oh, you fucker. <laughs> I don't know what this is to. It's till one of us throws the control at the other and shoot us straight. <laughs> Deathmatch doesn't work with you. No, 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 don't kill me. Fuck you. Son of a bitch! It's unlikely you're ever going to get to play this thing with two players, but if you have anything that can play PS1 games, it's probably worth picking up just for the single player yeah. experience. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the thing. It's unlikely you're ever going to get to play this thing with two players, but if you have literally any system that will run PS1 games, it's worth picking this up for the single player alone. It's easily the most unique spin on the original Doom games, and in my opinion, it's also the most polished. Shit, 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 fuck, fuck, fuck! I take it back, I hate it! It's kind of a shame that this version of Doom has more or less been forgotten. This is, as far as I'm concerned, the definitive version of Doom. I'd love to see this version pop up on the PlayStation Network, but as it was ported by a company who aren't in software development anymore and distributed by a company that no longer exists, the chances of seeing a version of Doom anything like this popping up anywhere are remote. Fans of incredibly dull facts may be interested to know that it doesn't look like this version of Doom is using any of the PlayStation's 3D rendering bits. It looks like the developers just took the PC version of the Doom engine and ported it straight across to the PlayStation. Which makes sense, Doom has always used a software renderer, it's never rendered in true 3D. They've had to make a few concessions along the way, for example they've stripped out Nightmare Mode entirely, probably because they didn't want to hit some kind of upper sprite limit. They've also removed things like motion textures, every texture you see on the game is static, there are no textures that move or scroll along walls. They've reduced the complexity of certain levels, which means that the last level of Doom 2 is entirely different, and they've stripped out about four or five of the game's bad guys. Playing the game at high resolution reveals the game's rendering techniques a little. This is the game running at 1280x1024, and you can see that the 3D space is still rather pixelated. In-game sprites like enemies and barrels are a lot smoother by comparison. Compare with this footage of Silent Hill being emulated on a PC, also at 1280x1024. The 3D graphics are much more crisp than Doom's software render. Not especially interesting, I know, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Doom PS1's legacy lives on with Doom 64, an unofficial sequel to Doom 2 developed by Midway for the N64 that uses entirely unique graphics but maintains the same tense atmosphere of the PlayStation port. Later ports of the original Doom, like the Game Boy Advance version and the Xbox Live Arcade re-release, stayed as faithful as they were able to the original PC release, which I think is a bit of a tragedy. The original PC version of Doom feels a lot like the high school textbook scribblings of an angsty teenage Black Sabbath fan. Conversely, the PlayStation version feels like the kind of thing that Stephen King would have written. You know, back before he started writing shit. It takes the idea of a demon-infested gateway to hell and runs with it in a way that no other version of Doom before or since ever really did. Play this version after a long day of work and you'll only wind up giving yourself nightmares. About your boss. Eating your face.